Yonara A. Shalom Akim Shalom. First and foremost, as always, before I get started, giving all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this truth and that rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth, all right, that are in the hopes of receiving salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth, okay? Now, as you can see, the title of this lesson is The Men of Nineveh, pursuant to Matthews um, 12 and 30, 38, if I'm not mistaken, are Israelites, okay? Now, what inspired me to do this video is a, um, a video by the man of Yakalam, all right, who is the one that runs the page of Friend of Yahweh, if I'm not mistaken, that made a video entitled Proof Heathen Will Repent and Be Converted to Be, uh, I'm sorry, to Receive Salvation Before Most of Israel to Third, okay, which is completely off, all right. Throughout this video, it's nothing but um, damnable heresies that are speaking contrary to the sound doctrine that the Heavenly Father has given us by Him putting the Spirit upon all right, his servants of prophets to now be given the secrets concerning the scriptures, okay? And the main, uh, you know, point that he tries to convey is using the story of Jonah, okay? Where Jonah goes to the land of Nineveh and through him preaching, the whole land of Nineveh repents, okay? And he uses that account as a way to show that salvation is open to all nations, okay, which is completely off, okay? The whole means of this video is to just bring forth edification regarding the story of Jonah because uh, even in the, you know, doctrine that these Catholics and these Christians uh, convey, they think the same thing, okay? But through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, all right, we're going to show forth the truth regarding salvation only being unto the nation of Israel, okay? So the first um, scripture that I want to grab real quick is in the book of Romans 16 and 17. Okay, just to show forth the whole reason as to why this video is being brought uh, to light. Romans 16 and 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have heard and avoid them. Okay? And these men right here are the ones that are pushing this doctrine. Okay? The man to the left, as well as to the man to the right, they both are men that have branched off of uh, GMS Boston. Okay, they were once affiliated and were going in when it came to being set at defense regarding the truth of the nation of Israel being the only nation that the Heavenly Father um, is dealing with. Okay, but now they're fallouts. Okay, that are bringing forth nothing but division. And using fair speech to deceive the heart of the simple. Okay? And, uh, matter of fact, let me read the next verse. Romans 16 and 18. It says, For they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the simple. Okay? And in this video uh, made by Yakalam, that's a beautiful example of that. Okay? Because throughout the whole volume of this, um, video he makes a lot of statements that need to be expounded upon okay so through the spirit and power of the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai we're gonna bring forth the truth regarding uh, the story of Jonah okay but first I want to play uh, some seconds of this video to show forth his point of view and to tear down the strong delusion more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and also many animals so here you have the Lord these are some heathen well they were heathen I'll put some respect on the Ninevites cause and they are heathen okay even understanding uh, real quick the definition for the word heathen alright heathen <clears throat> it goes back to the old English not Christian or Jewish, okay? Heathen man, one of a race or nation which does not acknowledge the God of the Bible, okay? And that falls into the category of 
every other nation but the nation of Israel, okay? The nation of Israel is the only nation that has been given the blessing slash inheritance of the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? Matter of fact, real quick, um, let's go to the book of damn, Salaki. The book of Sirach. All right, chapter. Damn, this is bugging out. Sirach does not have nine chapters. There you go. That's 51. Sirach 24, and. Let me see. And there's many scriptures that, you know, bring forth that understanding. Okay? The Heavenly Father severed who? The nation of Israel. All right, to be a peculiar people unto him. All right? And what makes them peculiar? The law, statutes, and commandments. This is the book of Sirach or Ecclesiastes 24 and starting at 7. All right. With all these, I sought rest. And the one that, um, the person that's speaking is Yahawashai. Okay. Which from the first verse, you could understand that by wisdom speaking. Okay. Which ultimately wisdom is synonymous for the word, which is who? Yahawashai. Okay. With all these, I sought rest. And in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thy inheritance in Israel. Okay? He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. Likewise, in the beloved city he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power. Okay? And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. All right? So point blank period. The Lord is found in no other nation but in Israel. Okay? As a matter of fact, real quick, let's get that in 2nd Ezra 3 and <coughs> around the 20... Um, Starting at the, starting at 28, it says, and this is speaking about the other nations, all right? Are their deeds then any better than, I'm sorry, uh, right, are their deeds then any better than inhabit Babylon, that they should therefore have the dominion over Zion? And the answer is no. For when I came thither and had seen impieties without number, then my soul saw many evildoers in this 30th year so that my heart failed me. Why? Because these other nations don't know the ways of righteousness, okay? They're beasts, meaning that they have no understanding regarding how to serve the Heavenly Father and how to establish um, a government under the authority of what? Righteousness, okay? For I have seen how thou sufferest them sinning and hast spared wicked doers and hast destroyed thy people and hast preserved thine enemies and has not signified it. I do not remember how this way may be left. Are they then of Babylon better than they of Zion? Or is there any other people that knoweth thee beside Israel? Or what generation has so believed thy covenants as Jacob? And their answer is nobody. Okay? The reason as to why Ezra is bringing this uh, question to the Heavenly Father is because we were catching hell. But we were catching hell, these other nations had their foot over us. Okay? And it was ultimately to fulfill the curses in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, all right? Starting from the 15th verse all the way down to the um the 60th verse, okay? Verse 33. And yet their reward appeareth not, and their labor has no fruit. For I have gone here and there throughout, I'm sorry, through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments, okay? Meaning that they have no relation with the Heavenly Father whatsoever. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and theirs also that dwell in the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? Thou shalt find that Israel by name has kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. Okay? So that in itself cuts the whole reasoning as to how proof I'm sorry or as to how heathen will repent and be converted to receive salvation okay that's completely off and if that's the case 
All right? What are the heathen going to repent of? All right? They didn't make a covenant with the Heavenly Father, so what are they going to be uh, going back to? All right? Just like Apostle um, Aramla be saying, think about it. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> so now let's keep uh, listening to this video. Because they did repent. Here you had a creation of the animals. So here you have the Lord. These are some heathen. Well, they were heathen. I'm put some respect on the Ninevites because they did repent. Here right. And it does say that the Ninevites did um, repent. Okay? In certain situations in Jonah. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, that's um, Jonah the third chapter. Jonah three, starting at uh, starting at the top, it says, "And the word of Yahweh came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee." So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of Yahweh. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey, and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So he was prophesying. You know? Doing the same thing that we're doing today. Alright? Showing our people their transgressions. Lifting up his voice like a trumpet. You know? Doing the bidding of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? So the people of Nineveh believed the Heavenly Father and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Okay? And guess what? The people of Nineveh, some of them were Israelites. Okay? Why? Because uh, something that Apostle Gabar always says, man. In order to understand the mystery, you have to understand the history. Okay? During the time of Jonah, it was roughly around 700, uh, 750 BC. Okay? Roughly around there. But when you go some years back, around 853 uh, BC, it takes you back to a battle of Quarquar, okay? Which was fought in 853 BC when the army of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, led by Emperor Shalmaneser III, encountered an allied army of 11 kings at Quarquar, led by Hadadezer, called an Assyrian adad Indir, and possibly to be identified with King Benadad II of Ar Aram Damascus and Ahab, king of Israel. This battle fought during the 854 through 846 BC Assyrian conquest of Aram is notable for having a larger number of combatants, all right, than any previous battle. All right. So it was ultimately a big battle where the Assyrians came out victorious. Now let me read uh, a little further down right here. It says, Assyrian records make it clear that he campaigned in the region several more times in the following decade, engaging Hadadezer six times, who was supported by um, Ur Urleni of Hama at least twice. Shalamaneser's opponents held onto their thrones after this battle, though Ahab of Israel died shortly afterward in an unrelatable battle. Hadadezer was king of Damascus until at least 841 BC. Okay? But the point being is that our nation was in the mix, okay? And through uh, Shala, uh, Shalamaneser III coming out victorious, what would happen? The fulfillment of us being scattered, okay? Let's get Deuteronomy 28 and I think it's 64 or 68. All right, back to the basics. Yep, it says, And the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. Okay? So throughout us being dispersed in the land of Assyria, which is where Nineveh was, okay, we started taking the customs of the Assyrians, you know? Started looking like them as we were intermingling, all right, with the women. All right, and doing our thing, okay? But the point being is that the men in Nineveh, pursuant to Matthew the 12th chapter, which is where Yahawashai was quoting from Jonah, they are Israelites, okay, that believed in the word of Jonah, which ultimately caused them to do what? To repent, 
to be in a state of mourning and to get back into the good grips of being Israelites. Okay? Verse 6, it says, For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Okay? So guess what? This king ultimately feared the Heavenly Father. Okay? And he put himself in a state of doing the same thing, of being um, in a state of sorrow. Why? Because he understood that the Heavenly Father was dealing. Okay? Case in point, um, King Cyrus, all right, of the Medio Persian Empire. If I'm not mistaken, that's in Isaiah, um, Isaiah 44. Yep, Isaiah 44 and 27. Matter of fact, Salaki, verse 28. That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. Okay? So the same way as to how the Heavenly Father used Cyrus as a vessel, me for his use, to bring forth the rebuilding of the temple, is the same thing that the Heavenly Father did with the king of Nineveh. Okay? Which, um, his name escapes me at the moment, but he gave the decree, alright, to the Israelite foreigners in that land to be put in that estate of repentance. Okay? Salvation is not open for all nations, man. All right? Verse 7. It says, And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto the Heavenly Father. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their lands. All right? So he gave the decree for his land, all right, of Nineveh, which was, uh, like it said in the third verse, um, an exceeding great city, a three days journey. It was a, it was a vast land, okay, to be in the state of fasting and being repentful. Why? So that the nation of Israel, all right, that was intermingled in the land of Nineveh, to come back to the stead of being Israelites, okay? So now let's go down to um, verse 9. It says, Who can tell if the Heavenly Father will turn and repent and turn away from His fierce anger that we perish not? And the Heavenly Father saw their works that they turned from their evil way and the Heavenly Father repented of the evil that He had seen that He would do unto them and He did it not. Why? Because he saw the nation of Israel being brought back into the understanding of being Israelites and now keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay? That's the whole reason as to why Yahawashai quoted from the book of Jonah. Okay? Because based upon their action of believing in the words of Jonah, they brought forth uh, fruit. Alright, I'm sorry, I'm quoting that scripture incorrectly. They brought forth fruit, meat for repentance. Okay? And through that very self-same act came what? Mercy. Okay? Not because the Heavenly Father decided to show mercy upon the other nations and now bring forth salvation. No, man. Okay? It was because of the act of Israelites bringing forth that, uh, you know, sweet savor in the sight of the Lord. Okay? Right, that was the point in Jonah. So now let's go back to uh, this dude's video and see what he has to say. Here you had a creation of the Lord that he had compassion on. And that's what he was telling Jonah. You didn't create these people. You didn't create them. So they received salvation because they are the Lord's creation. Eventually they would meet their demise. And that's completely off, okay? The only reason that the Heavenly Father brought Jonah over there is because you had Israelites... They didn't know good and wrong. Or, I'm sorry. They didn't have the spirit of discernment to discern right from wrong. Okay. This is Jonah 4. And um, matter of fact, let's build it up a little. Let's go to matter of fact, I'll start at 1. Jonah 4 and 1. It says, Jonah's displeasure rebuked. 
But it did please Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet, yet in my country? All right, because at first Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because he understood that the Lord was long suffering for the nation of Israel. Okay, so he's, he, he saw that there was no need to go and, you know, preach in Nineveh. Okay, therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Yahweh, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow, till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord Yahweh power prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. Okay, so he pretty much gave him some cover to, um, you know, find some shade from the sun. Okay, but the Heavenly Father prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day and it smote the gourd that it withered. So the Heavenly Father put a worm and that shade was no more. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that the Heavenly Father prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished. <laughs> <See, like, laughs> And that shows that the Lord is, you know, omnipotent. All right. Doing all this just to show Jonah that, um, you know, his ways are higher than Salaki. That his ways are higher to the point that we can't even comprehend it. That he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. So he was hot, you know, that he was getting to him. And the heavenly father said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. Then said the Lord, Thou hast not, I'm sorry, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored. Neither madest, madest it grow, which came up in a night, and perished in a night. Okay? So the point being is that the Heavenly Father showing, alright, Jonah, that he didn't put any work to bring forth the gourd to the estate that it's in now. So why the hell are you mad? You know? Likewise with uh, the, the land of Nineveh. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than um, six score thousand persons, which is, if I'm not mistaken, 120,000. Right, 120,000 people. It says that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. Let's read that in the NLT. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness. Okay? And who are the people that were living in spiritual darkness? The Israelites. Okay? Just like it tells in Isaiah... Um, let's get that next. Isaiah 60 and 1. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. Okay? And the, uh, the glory is ultimately the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? The end sign that it speaks about in uh, Isaiah the 11th chapter. Okay? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But Yahweh shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles, who are the Gentiles? Israelite foreigners, all right, that are in that estate of not discerning right from wrong, shall come to the light, shall come back to the fold of being Israelites, okay? And kings, all right, to the brightness of thy rising. The kings here speaking about the other nations, all right, that are going to bring forth the best of their best to our people, all right? But the point being is, uh, this section of this chapter, all right? So now let's go back to Jonah 4, and let's read that verse again. It says, And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than 120,000 people that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? So pretty much the Heavenly Father was showing unto Jonah, Look, I got my nation in there, 
and I needed you to go over there so that they that you can finally stir their pure minds back to what the way of remembrance of being a nation of kings and priests all right that are supposed to follow the jurisdiction of righteousness okay and that's exactly what happened so now let's go back to this video over time you know cuz um of, of eventually which we like to lack responsibility meaning these nations came up against us why because we were going off and this took place over a hundred and something years after these men had repented so that king had died off but eventually they would meet their demise by the Babylonians but they would also take the um the northern kingdom bring them into captivity and you know the Lord be when you went off there okay the Babylonians didn't put northern kingdom into captivity it was a uh... A uh, Neo Assyrian Empire that did that. Okay, you can read about that in um, Second Ezra the thirteenth chapter, where it speaks about how uh, Shalmaneser, okay, put forth Northern Kingdom in a position where they were put into a land, and then they were ultimately put into the Western Hemisphere. All right, to to do what? To keep the commandments. Okay, which is other. You know, it doesn't say it, but through the Spirit, that's most likely why the Heavenly Father put Jonah in that position. To bring the nation of Israel that was in the land of Nineveh back to the understanding of being Israelites, okay? To have the foreknowledge of being Israelites so that when they're put in the Western Hemisphere to establish it, okay? Well, being merciful when some of them, it's written in the book of Second Kings, wanted to come up against the southern kingdom. The Lord remembering David, he slaughtered, I believe it was 180. Right. So eventually they would meet their demise, but... You know, it, 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 you can find that. Um, and like I was saying, he makes a lot of statements that have to be expounded upon, okay? In the book of Amos, Isaiah, Nahum, Torbid, even. To and even uh, considering the beloved elder uh, Manatha Zakba's video, uh, he made a beautiful point where when, uh, when Jake is proud, they make lengthy videos where they make a lot of points to boast okay and that's exactly what jake's doing in here all right i name a few which i mentioned again took place over a hundred years after that so it goes back to repentance is a condition to salvation for repentance to be a condition it would mean that the lord required one to repent in order to be saved from their sins so now you have to ask yourself how can some actions of some heathen condemn Israelites on And once again, how in the hell is this lucky? <laughs> but these other nations can't sin. Why? Because they're not under the first covenant. Okay? They don't know the law, statutes, and commandments because it wasn't given to them. The only nation that's been given the, the condition, like he's saying, to have that ability of sin and repent, to receive salvation is the nation of Israel, okay? On the day of judgment, which goes back to the statement in Matthew 12, and um, I say Israelites because Yahweh Shah was speaking to scribes and Pharisees and was comparing them to repenting. He was comparing the Ninevites repenting to Jonah, but to Israel, not repenting to him. Now, going back to Matthew 12, it says that they shall condemn thee on the day of judgment. So what is the day of judgment? Revelation 20 and 11. Right, and the reason why the men in Nineveh were going to condemn um, the, the wicked scribes and Pharisees is because the men in Nineveh, by the foolishness of preaching via Jonah, believed. And through that belief came what? The mercy of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Matter of fact, uh, let me pull that up. Because the way he breaks it down is completely off. Still going under the illusion of thinking salvation is open unto everybody and thinking that the uh, Ninevites are Assyrians. Matthews 12 and, um, right, 38. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Let me put it in the red letter. Verse 39, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Okay? For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, 
so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. All right? The men in Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Why? Because they didn't believe in Yahawashai. Here it is, Yahawashai was bringing forth these miraculous miracles, you know? And also preaching. But guess what? They didn't believe. All right? That's why Yahawashai made that, uh, that comparison slash allusion with the men in Nineveh, okay? Because off of the mere speech of Jonah showing forth the judgment that was going to uh, take place due to the way that the Ninevites were conducting themselves, the Israelite foreigners repented, okay? Which is why the Israelite foreigners in Nineveh condemned that generation, because the wicked scribes and Pharisees didn't have any faith, okay? The men in Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here, okay? That's the whole point that Yahweh is making, all right? So now let's hear, let's hear how this dude's going to break it down. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before the Lord and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works Re yo judgment day where I remember going back to Matthew um going back to Matthew 12 and right if I'm mistaken there's also a Judgment seat in the book of Corinthians. Right, this is uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Okay, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahawashai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Okay. Once again, the point being is that the nation of Israel is only is the only one that has the ability to receive that salvation of having a good pattern of having a pattern of good works, okay? Not these other nations. All other nations, all right, are going to fall into the category of suffering in that lake of fire, man. Okay? Because they all have a track record against our nation of doing what? Persecuting us. Okay? And the Heavenly Father is going to reap what they've been sowing. In uh, 41, because it says the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation. So it's talking about on judgment day that they're going to rise up and be a witness. It says and they shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So going back to Revelation, it says, um, 20 and 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever so was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Right. This is why I started with Matthew, um, Matthew 12 and 36, because it said, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account there in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. There goes that word condemned again. So by your words, the Lord's going to judge your words, the Lord's going to judge your thoughts. You are either going to be condemned, or you are either going to be justified. To what? Condemned to that second death? Or justified to... Right, and the whole... Um... Salakia. All these other nations are going to be condemned in that second death. Okay? As well as two-thirds of our nation. But the distinguishing factor is that two-thirds, once they go through that process of going through that second death, they're going to be, what? Joint heirs of the kingdom. Okay? Because they're the ones that have that blessing, all right? Of having the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Like it tells in 1 Corinthians, um, the third chapter. 
So lucky. I just put the number. <laughs> so lucky. First Corinthians three and fifteen, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Going straight to the point. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay. So he's going to be saved, but it's going to be through the process of death by pain. Okay. The only ones that aren't going to go through that process is the 144,000, all right, the elect, as well as the great multitude, the one third of the nation of Israel. Okay? Eternal life. Now, going back, because, um, let me get this right here, bear with me, because, um, Okay, I just read Revelation 20, bear with me. Be, because here you have it, Yahweh Shai is saying on Judgment Day that the act of heathen, well, well I'm picking in the account of Jonah. Like we said, those aren't heathen, okay? The only nation that has that um, ability of showing forth that action is the nation of Israel, okay? Not no goddamn heathen, man. And um, how it will condemn wicked Israelites to that lake of fire, which is the second death. It's, 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 that's, that's, that's heavy because it's going to be too late when you see He, he, he doesn't know the scriptures, okay? He does not know what he's speaking about, man. All right? That's why he, <laughs> you know, he's stumbling. He's throwing up everything that he's been taught, all right, by these two men. Stand before the throne of the Lord. So when you make a statement, you know, what this lesson comes down to as well is when you make a statement saying that people outside of Israel can't receive salvation or salvation is exclusive to Israel, that's contrary to what the scriptures are saying. So the whole narrative of the Bible always centered around the nation of Israel. OK, that shows forth that these people, uh, it's like not people, these false prophets have been ultimately be been beguiled by Satan, man. Okay? Because like I said, they once were going hard in the paint, all right, of being set at the defense of the gospel. All right? What is salvation according to Yahweh Shah? Because the theology definition or the blue letter is delivered from sin and its consequences believed by Christians to be brought about by faith in Mashiach. So salvation is preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. So when we read the book of Jonas, you know, and you had these, I'm going to call them men of men of a And if I remember, um, the apostles that said this, salvation is ultimately being beamed up into the chariots, man. All right? Because, yeah, of course, we do have this truth, but at the end of the day, we, we aren't saved yet. Okay? We're still in the land of our captivity, and we have not obtained that which our forefathers have been seeking for, okay? Right. Salvation goes back to the Greek 4991, Soteria. It says, deliverance, preservation, safety, all right? Deliverance from the mol uh, molestation of enemies, okay? Boom. Future salvation, the sum of benefits and blessings which the Christians, all right, followers of Yahweh Shai, redeemed from all earthly ills, will enjoy after the visible return of Yahweh Shai from heaven in the consummated and eternal kingdom of the Heavenly Father. Okay? So let's go back to this. They did repent. Um, when you had the men of Nineveh repent, what did they say in Jonah 3 and 9? Who can tell if the Lord will turn? And guess what? The men of Nineveh, all right, the actual heathens, they weren't saved. Why? Because... Who came up next? The Babylonians. All right? Some goddamn Hamites. <laughs> okay? And repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. So when you look at the theology and definition, salvation is preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. While perish... And guess what? The heathen lost. Okay? Even, you know, considering our nation... Okay, we weren't saved during that time, all right, because we still had to fulfill prophecy. To suffer death, typically in a violent, sunny, or untimely manner. 
so the Lord repented of what he wanted to do to them and they received salvation it's okay this is why this this account the only reason that the Lord preserved them once again was for the sake of the uh, for the Israelites that were in that land okay left inside the scriptures not just that there's a uh, Oh man, I forgot the name. So I locked it. We went into it at camp yesterday, and it was beautiful. But um, just to finish this off, because um, sal salvation to Yahweh Shah is what when you go to John five and twenty four, it says, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, have everlasting life, and shall not come into the con shall not come into the condemnation, but is past." From death unto life. So even when you look here, you had these men. If Jonah was sent unto them, they were sent unto them to prophesy. Likewise, Paul. All right, once again, the point he's trying to make is that uh, these other nations, because they believed in Jonah, they're going to receive everything. It's bullshit, man. All right? Like we broke down. Through the process of us fulfilling the curses of being scattered abroad, we took the appearance of looking like the Assyrians and followed their customs. But once Jonah was put on the scene, he stirred them back to the way of remembrance of being Israelites, okay? Which is why that land was ultimately given mercy, okay? So with that, I'm just going to end it off with, uh, you know, with that, man, because he later on goes with, uh, he just goes on a tangent. You know, like I said earlier, he makes lots of statements that need to be expounded upon, and ultimately it doesn't even, you know, help his point of bringing forth the proof that he then can convert and receive salvation, okay? Salvation is only pursuant to what Yahweh Shai said to the uh, to the woman at the well, which was a Hamite. Salvation is for the Jews, man, okay? So with that, giving all praise to our power, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us his truth and that Ruel, and peace and blessings go out to the elect. Shalom.